In this clip, we're going to take a look at creating our first n particles inside of Maya. So to get started, we're going to come up here to the n particles menu, and we'll go ahead and tear that off. Now there are a variety of different ways to create particles, but before we do that, we need to choose the type of particle we're going to create. And we can do that by coming down here to the create options. And you'll notice that there's a lot of different types here. Specifically, we have point, balls, cloud, thick cloud, and water. Now, we're going to be covering all but one of these in this training course. We won't be covering the thick cloud particles because those actually work alongside with the Maya fluid system, which is something that's a bit more advanced and not something being covered in this course. So this will be better kind of saved for a course, again, on Maya fluids. We will, however, be covering point, balls, cloud, and water particles. Now we're going to have a module devoted to pretty much each one of these. So for now, we're just going to leave it at point particles to keep things simple, and then we'll talk about each of these really unique particle types individually as we get to them. So with point particles selected, I'll go ahead and close this off. We can now choose how we're going to create our particles. And there's actually a lot of different ways to create them. We could fill an object with particles here, we could actually get an end particle pre-made example here from the Maya content browser. You can see a lot to choose from there. Close that off. We could also use the end particle tool to create individual particles. We could create a series of soft body particles that are all connected together. We can also create emitters that actually shoot out particles or even objects that shoot out particles. However, for right now, since we're just getting started, we're going to go ahead and use the end particle tool. This tool will allow us to create our particles individually. So I'll go ahead and choose the option box on that. Close off that. Let's bring this over here. We'll just make it fit just a little bit nicer right there. We'll also get rid of my outliner. We don't really need it for the moment. So the way this works, at least with all of the defaults, is we would start by entering our particle name. So we'll call this just my first particles right there. Now the solver, which we'll discuss a little bit later, if we don't have an existing one in the scene, is just going to create a new one by default. So we'll just kind of leave that as is right now. We're also going to leave the conserve alone. We'll talk about that a little bit later as well. So you can see for starters, every time I click, I'm going to be creating one particle. So as I click, you can see I get that little kind of red cross every single time I click. That will become one particle each. Now, if I wanted to, I could create a lot more at once than just one. Let's say I type in 25 here. Now, every time I click, it's actually making 25. However, since they're all directly on top of each other, we can't really see that. So what we can do is change the radius here. Right now it's zero. So basically all the particles get created on one spot. Let's change the radius to one. And now each time I click, you can see that they're all randomly scattered in a one unit radius. I can of course use a slightly larger radius as well. We can try maybe three units. And you can see I get a much larger grouping. And you can see that's actually in the X, Y, and Z that it randomizes. Also notice that by default it is placing the particles on our grid, or at least centered onto our grid. Put that back to one. Now in order to place these particles, I'm clicking once for each grouping right now. If I want to draw these a little bit faster, I can enable sketch mode over here. So sketch particles, and now I can click and drag, and you can see I can draw particles much, much faster. So it's really quick to get a whole lot of them in the scene all at once. So in order to actually convert these two particles, because right now it's kind of this uh, kind of intermediate mode where we're just kind of drawing them on, what I need to do is either select my uh, selection tool here or the move tool, or just hit enter. So I'll go ahead and hit enter. And you can see that they've now been converted to particles. I'll go ahead and close that off. If we also go ahead and take a look in our outliner over here, you can see that it's created two separate nodes. We have our actual particles node and our nucleus node. We'll go over both of these nodes in detail in a future clip. So this is one way to use the end particle tool to create our particles. There are other ways as well though. I'm going to go ahead and delete these. However, I'm going to leave this nucleus here. So we'll go up to end particles, end particle tool. We'll go ahead and select that. 
And you'll see now that I have a choice between creating a new solver or using the existing nucleus solver. We'll keep the existing nucleus for right now, and we'll call this my uh, grid particles. So as you probably guessed, we're going to take a look at working with these particle grids over here. So there's two ways to create our particle grids, with the cursor or with text fields. When we're using the cursor, I'm basically going to click two points, basically the two corners, so maybe right there and right there, and as soon as I hit enter, you could see it's created a particle grid with that spacing. So we'll go ahead and delete that. And let's go ahead and grab that tool again. So I can also change the spacing of the particles between those two points. So right now it's at point 0.5. I'll change it to point 0.1. We'll go ahead and place two more. Hit enter. And you can see it's a much more dense grouping of particles. That's because they're five times closer together. Therefore, we can fit theoretically five times as many particles in that grid. So the other way we can go ahead and create these particles through this tool is by using text fields, where I can actually set kind of my minimum and maximum corner. So I could say the minimum corner is maybe 0, 0, 0. So that's going to be our uh, kind of zero point right there. And then we'll say that uh, you know we're 0 in the y, which would be the up and down. But let's say positive 10 in the x and positive 10 in the z. There we go. So now I'll go ahead and hit enter. And you can see it's created that grid for me right there. So the other thing I want to quickly show you, if we're actually using this end particle tool, we don't always have to draw on the grid. Let's say uh, I want to draw on an existing object. I'll come over here and just change to my, uh, let's go to my curves and surfaces. Actually, you know what? Let's do this on a polygon object. We'll just create a sphere. So, and I'll go ahead and expand the size of that sphere. Let's say I want to draw the uh, particles onto this sphere, or at least roughly have the shape of this sphere up here in the air. What I need to do is convert this sphere to a live surface. I can do that by coming up here and choosing this magnet that's close to this text box that says no live surface. Go ahead and click that. Notice I can't select the sphere anymore, and it does say P sphere 1 up here. I'll now go ahead and select my particle tool. Double click that to get the options. I'll go back to the sketch particles up here. And now notice I can't draw on the grid. It kind of draws only on this object. So I can go in and sketch on all of these different particles right there. So, and when I'm done, just hit enter. And I have my particles on that surface. If I want to get rid of this sphere, I have two different options. I could go ahead and disable the magnet. And you can see now I have access to actually select that sphere right there. Or even if the magnet were still on, you could always select it here in the outliner. And again, just delete it. So that's a look at creating particles with our end particle tool.